Hello everyone, I just wanted to do a quick video for you all to help alleviate any confusions you might be having when you think about Z codes and the purpose. So just a quick overview, Z codes are codes that we use not for a current illness or injury, but these are for factors that influence a patient's health status, contact with a health service, we use these codes for people who are coming in that aren't currently sick, like somebody coming in for their um, annual checkup, somebody coming in just for this time of year, right, the flu vaccine, somebody coming in to see um, about being an organ donor. If a baby's born, they're not coming in because they're sick, they're coming in because they were born. So Z codes are all those things that might impact somebody's health. So when do we use them? Well, anytime there's a circumstance or a problem that influences the patient's current, current illness or injury, we would use a Z code. And an example might be, let's say we have a patient with a history of coronary artery bypass who's coming in with chest pain. Well, the chest pain is gonna be a regular diagnosis. And then we would use a Z code for the coronary artery bypass. That shows the history. Again, the coronary artery bypass is not a current thing, right? They've already had it done, so it's a status. One thing I do wanna note is that all Z codes cannot be a primary code. There's, if you open up your ITD-10 CM book and go to uh, the Z codes, so, page 1348, there is a list of what Z codes can be, principal diagnosis, primary diagnosis. Um, under the category um, <clears throat> 16. So if you guys look at that, coding guidelines I know are what we're talking about in, in discussions. But if anybody hasn't talked about that yet, please notice that and go to that page and familiarize yourself with what Z codes can be listed first as the principal diagnosis and what ones have to be secondary. So they have to be listed in addition to. So here's an example. So like I said before, let's say that it's um, a secondary code. So in this example, we have a patient who came to the physician office with a chief complaint of chest pain, undetermined cause. And we have the patient who has a status post, open heart surgery for mitral valve replacement six months prior. So we have two things going on here, right? We have a patient with chest pain, and then our patient also had a heart valve replacement. And it's not a current heart valve placement, it's a prior one. So we're gonna code pain, chest, just regular by regularly looking it up. So if you open up your index and go to pain, and then to chest, which that's on page 299, right? You would look up that code regular. And then our Z code, we're gonna look up by going to S in our index, status post. Status post, which starts on page 345. And once you're at status post, we're gonna say status post what? Well, status post means after, right? It's already done. So status post or organ replacement, and then heart valve. So go ahead and look that up. And hopefully everyone is on page 345, and if it's in the third um, column of status post, the very last column on the page, status post organ replacement. And then we would have to know which organ, right? And it's heart, and it's heart, and then heart valve. So R says mitral valve replacement. So we want valve. So that code is Z95.2. So hopefully you guys see that. So we would code the chest pain um, just as usual, which I didn't tell you that code. So chest pain um, is R07.9, and then our Z code of the Z95.2. Okay, so how are some ways you can look up Z codes? Well, you have to stop and ask yourself, okay, what is the patient here for? Here are just a few examples of some terms you can use. This isn't all-inclusive. That doesn't mean you have to use one of these. These are just some good ways to start. 
So admission for, aftercare, border, examination, history, exposure to, attention to, donor, follow-up, observation, and prophylactic. Again, those are just some you can try as a main term to look up in the index. We use Z codes uh, to show if a drug is resistant, right? We've all heard of MRSA. Um, so if you're coding a resistant to a, a microorganism, you'd look under resistant. There's Z codes for potential health hazards. Like if somebody was exposed to say um, anthrax at work, or somebody was exposed to maybe secondhand smoke, or someone was exposed to um, tuberculosis, right? Any, any kind of exposure. Then we have um, personal and family histories. Now I do want to highlight that these are both in the same area. So if you guys, again, open up your code book um, to page 226. This is where the history is. I don't know if you guys can see my pink highlight. I like to highlight it big so you guys can see. But on page 226, you want to code personal history and family history, and they're not the same. Family history is at the very top of the first column on page 226, and take your finger and go all the way to the almost the bottom of the second column, then you'll see personal of and it's indented out. So family starts on page 226 and goes all the way to that personal of at the second column, almost to the bottom of 226. And that's where personal starts. So why is it important to designate if, if it's a personal or family history? Because that really tells a story, right? If the patient had breast cancer versus the patient's mom had breast cancer. So you're telling a story with your codes, remember. So I would highlight family and personal just so you know when you're coding a history that you're in the right category. Because again, if your dad had it or the patient had it, it's a big difference. We also have histories for allergy to medicines, um, hazards to health, like I said, working in a coal mine, any kind of history of other diseases like um, diabetes, chest pain, um, glaucoma, kidney diseases, lots of things that a, a patient's genetics can bring with them. So if a patient's coming in for say a breast lump and their mom had breast cancer, that's probably important. We wanna pick that up. So we would code the regular diagnosis for breast lump. And then we're also gonna code a family history of breast cancer or, or malignant neoplasm, okay? Then we have Z codes related to pregnancy and reproduction. So these, again, um, you look them up by going to pregnancy, by um, going to supervision of, and any kind of postpartum care, contraceptive management, sterilization of somebody's coming in just to get their tubes tied, right? Just for a tubal ligation. Again, they're not sick. You don't have a diagnosis to code, but there is a Z code sterilization. So if we go look that up, so if I look at sterilization, So on page 347 in the code book, if you look up sterilization, it tells you see encounter for sterilization. So that's one of those cross references we learned about earlier. So then I'm gonna to go to encounter, which is on page 188, and then to sterilization. Which is on 189, the first column, and it's Z30.2. So hopefully you guys see that okay. So some other Z codes um, are pregnancy, if, if the management's affected by something, like if the mom had insufficient prenatal care, right? Say she didn't start coming to prenatal visits till she was 30 weeks along. That's important. Okay, outcome of delivery. I first want to clarify that there's an outcome of delivery that goes on mom's chart. And we'll get onto this more when we code um, pregnancy later on. 
but mom and babe are each coded separate. You never put a newborn code on mom's chart and you never put outcome of delivery on babe's chart. They're each their own person once that baby is born. So for moms, you have to say what came out of her delivery process, right? Was it a single live born, multiple stillborn, et cetera? For the baby, you have to say, hey, I'm a newborn. So newborn, you go to newborn outcome of delivery. For mom, saying what baby came out. We also have Z codes for organ tissue replacements. And again, that post-surgical status. So anytime something's already happened to the patient, you wanna do status post. Like if they had an organ transplant, kind of when we did the heart valve replacement, you go to status post. So if they had a pacemaker, um, if they've already had a, a heart bypass, a cabbage, C-A-B, um, CG is cabbage, coronary artery bypass graft, right? If they've had one of those, any kind of artificial opening like a colostomy, tracheostomy, all that's under status post saying it's already done. So final slide, I know I said I would make this quick, but there's also other circumstances. If somebody's dependent on machine, like a patient is um, dependent on a respirator or an aspirator if somebody's coming in just for surveillance just like for a follow-up if somebody's coming in for a pre-op exam if somebody's coming in just for a lab test or a radiology test all those are just encounters right the patient isn't really sick so if all else fails i would recommend that you all just take a few minutes and look through um, all these orange pages in your code book so all the orange pages where the Z codes are, and there's not that many, but it's a good idea just to get familiar with what your choices are. Okay, thanks for watching, and I hope you found this helpful.